Ella Marie Grunberg entered the world 16 weeks early. She weighed 1 pound 0.6 ounces and measured 10.82 inches long. I was about 23 weeks pregnant. I was a school teacher at the time and so I'd been up all weekend with a really bad headache. Monday morning, went to school, was feeling super dizzy. I went to check in at the nurse. She had me do a wrist like blood pressure cuff and it was high enough where she said, I think you need to go get checked out. I got admitted into St. Francis about an hour and a half before I was supposed to be discharged. They came back in and told me that I had protein in my urine and they were like, you're gonna have this baby by the end of the week. They actually came up to speak to us. It was probably a 30 minute spiel of all the things that could go wrong and it was a pretty grim outlook. Friday came and they told us we were gonna have her that day. It was gonna be a C-section. I actually ended up passing out after they took her out, but we did get to see her for a brief minute and she was crying when she came out. You know, it was like, mm -hmm. okay, step one, she's alive. We're starting what the rest of our life with her is gonna look like. It's pretty incredible how little and she was. You just you look at them and it's like, how, are you, how do you do anything with a child like this? When I first met Ella, it was when the nurse brought her into the resuscitation room. She was so very, very tiny, one of the smallest living infants I had ever seen. We attached the monitor, she had an excellent heart rate. My impression was just very happy for the situation with how vigorous she was at birth. Easter Sunday, we got a call and they said, we need mom to come up to the NICU. I hadn't really been out of bed a whole lot. It was a very, very long wheelchair ride. <laughs> that first time they wheeled us down the hallway and there's like no less than 15 people in her room. And the doctor was like, we need to take you somewhere more quiet that we can talk. And she was like, you know, she was breathing on her own when she came out. She really didn't need a lot of support, but we've had to put her on high frequency jet ventilation. She's had a lung that's collapsed. You know, and you're thinking of how tiny she is, and you're like, a lung that's collapsed? Like, she's not even as big as a lung at that point. And so they wanted me to see her because they didn't know if she was gonna make it. She had air outside of her lung between the lung and chest wall. So that pushed everything over and she couldn't breathe. Immediately her oxygen levels dropped, her heart rate dropped, and she was critically ill within a matter of 30 seconds. You know, I had seen her several times. I had been in there, I had sat with her, but she had not had that opportunity yet. One of the nurses that uh, Amanda asked, can I touch her? And in that moment, everybody just stopped and one nurse grabbed her and picked her up and brought her to her in the wheelchair in the doorway and let her reach out and just touch her. Just getting her stabilized because of her size was difficult. The lungs were not working properly. She developed the pneumothorax. We didn't have the access we needed because of her size. At about three weeks of age, she had to have heart surgery. You figure her heart is only this big and they're operating on a blood vessel next to that heart, so tiny, and had to go in and clip that blood vessel closed. Every part of her needed a little bit of TLC and uh, a lot of technology. Really the first month was kind of like, she just needs to be tucked in and cozy and to try and get stronger. Whatever's gonna happen, however she's gonna turn out, that's it's gonna be her fighting to be here. It was just amazing how strong she was through all of this. One of my friends had gifted me a binder filled with notebook paper, and every day I dated, like I listed the na names of the nurses that were in her room, her respiratory therapist. That's kind of how I plugged in. Her mom was there with her more than I was, and she would make observations and bring suggestions and observations to me that helped me with Ella's care. It is not lost on us how lucky we are to have had our 24-week baby in somewhere that was a level four NICU. St. Francis is one of only two NICUs in the state of Oklahoma that has a level four NICU, which are NICUs with the most extensive ability to care for infants. Specialized ventilators, specialized equipment to care for infants of this size. So the team that we have here of expertise with our nursing staff and the ancillary staff just gives us everything we need to help care for an infant that has as many complications as Ella had. I think we were able really early on to say like, we're gonna trust what 
St. Francis and the Children's Hospital has to offer. Like we trust in their sound decisions. We're in the right place. Once they moved us out into a room that had a window that overlooked everything and she was kind of a regular crib and it was more of a switching into kind of a, a, a parent mode than it was just a being along for the ride. I feel like in the NICU there's always this reality. They never lie to you, which I think is a good thing. There's never truly a period of time where you can say, I can guarantee you, your baby's gonna make it out of the NICU. They assure you they're gonna do everything they can, and so if you can trust you know, what they're telling you, just tell you like it is, I think that really does help you stay grounded. She came home on a bradycardia monitor and on oxygen. We got home, we got her out, and then we crossed the threshold and her monitor started going off. And that was yeah. pretty jarring. She kind of settled down and we were able to kind of take a deep breath and kind of look at each other and say, oh, here we go. But that's kind of how it was for at least the first two or three weeks. They tell you when you are discharged, she's on her own path. Once we hit that two and a half year mark, it was like, okay, you know, a lot of her personality started coming out. And so that first year for her birthday, we did a preemie pajama collection drive. We, cause that gamete took a baby, and when we're all done, we cook them up to the hospital where I was born. This is like a cow kit, and the a cow pajama with a little pocket. I feel good because I actually love little baby being born. Now that Ella's getting older, like she helps unwrap the stuff. She holds up each piece and comments like how much a baby is gonna love being in the pajama piece. Her mother sends me pictures routinely. My favorite one, it is a picture of tiny little Ella at a year sitting next to a picture of herself as a newborn just watching her as she grows and seeing that she can do everything that she needs to do as a happy, healthy seven-year-old. Again, it's extremely rewarding. Just to know how much she has overcome, especially in those first 24 hours, 72 hours, first couple of weeks, she'll always be our little miracle girl. Looking at what she is today, I mean, there's no way you could say that she's not a miracle.